Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here, and Apple today released the macOS Sequoia 15.2 update. This is a much anticipated update that is packed with a bunch of changes, features, and bug fixes that we're going to go over in this video. Plus, we're also going to talk about Open Core Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs, and we got a brand new version available, 2.2.0. So we're going to do a sneak peek of that. You're going to want to stick around for this one. Let's jump in and get started. Along with macOS Sequoia 15.2, Apple released the full set of updates for all devices, including macOS Sonoma 14.7.2. Mac OS Ventura 13.7.2, iOS and iPad OS 18.2, iOS 17.7.3 for older devices or anybody that hasn't upgraded yet, Watch OS 11.2, HomePod OS 18.2, TV OS 18.2, and finally Vision OS 2.2. Let's hop on over to our demonstration Mac here today, which is a MacBook Air M1 2020. I have Five Vault 2 enabled, Find My enabled, and my test Apple ID is being used for this. All we need to do is click on software update available and we should see our update right here we can click on more info to see all the changes and fixes in this update all we need to do is click on update now and agree and type in our administrator password or user password and it will start to download the update we're going to keep track and see how long it takes to install this update and we'll be back right after it's finished okay we're back up after the 15.2 update what is the build version is 24c 101 and i always say that we go over this build version in case you are testing previous releases because last week we got the rc or release candidate one release which is 24c 98 but then this past monday we thought the public release was going to drop and instead we got a rc2 24c 100 but today they released the public version. It was not the same as the RC, which normally it is, and it went to 101. So I want to make sure if you're not on 101, turn off the beta updates and update to the latest version of the public release. How long did it take to install the 15.2 update? Now, this is a larger update. Anytime they have a single digit update compared to the security update releases or emergency bug fix releases, like where they include the dot release here, they usually take a little bit longer. So we had nine minutes to prepare the update and then five minutes to the install for a total time of 14 minutes. Okay, what were the update sizes for the different types of updates? If you have an unsupported Mac for Open Core Legacy Patcher, your update was 15.25 gigabytes. Now keep in mind that is a little bit larger than previous updates, which is around 14 gigabytes. So keep that in mind. If you've got an Apple Silicon Mac and you're coming from 15.1.1, 3.63, and the Delta from Intel, 15.11 is 2.17. Now let's take a look at the firmware updates for 15.2. If you have an Apple Silicon Mac, your firmware was updated to 11.881.61.3. The same thing for the OS loader version. Now if you have an Intel T2, your bridge OS was updated to 22.16.12.093, but your firmware remained the same. Apple also released individual standalone downloaders for Safari 18.2 for macOS Sonoma and macOS Ventura. And you should see those in your software update next to the 14.7.2 and the 13.7.2 update. Now let's dive into what's new in the 15.2 update. Now this is like a part two because in 15.1, Apple released most of the Apple intelligence updates. But with this one, they promised for 15.2 that they would include Image Playground, ChatGTP support, and additional Apple intelligence writing tools. So let's first take a closer look at the Image Playground application. If you open up the app, you'll immediately be brought to a new splash screen. Express yourself visually in unique ways across apps. Connect to Wi-Fi and power for setup. Use your imagination. Customize your image with suggested themes, costumes, accessories, and more. You can also choose someone you know or start with the details like appearance and skin tone. You can also try different combinations. Experiment with new environments or styles to create a playful combination. Let's set it up. Setting up image creation, you'll be notified when the image creation is available and make sure that you are connected to Wi-Fi and you're plugged into power where you're on a desktop obviously or if you're a laptop make sure you plug in that power adapter and all the models will start to download and we'll click on done so that's gonna take a little bit so let's show you where you can see that status if you open up system settings and then click on Apple intelligence in Surrey you'll see image playground and this is the same thing we talked about with the 15.1 update when you're enabling Apple intelligence the first time you enable Apple intelligence it's creating your own personal environment and and then it will 
say that it's complete and you can start to use Apple Intelligence features. The same thing here with the Image Playground. Now, if you're curious how long it's gonna take, the best thing you can do is open up your activity monitor and click on the network tab. And you can actually see it downloading the Apple Intelligence Image Playground features. So we'll let this thing download here and then we'll move on from here. Okay, just finally got done downloading. You can see here that we see that download is complete. And when we look at the Apple Intelligence section, the Image Playground now is no longer here, showing that it is currently in progress. To get to the Image Playground app, all we need to do is go into Macintosh Hard Drive or click on Finder, go into Applications, and then click on I for Image Playground. Now, once it's downloaded, we see a different splash screen, but it's the basically the same information here. So we'll click on continue. And here we are. We can see all the different suggestions of what you can do here. We can use some of the suggestions. Let's say we can use stadium. Let's see if we can give it some weather. Let's show volcano in the background. Now, when you see this, it's actually processing and you can see that it will finish when it's done. You'll see the done button up here Go from gray to highlighted and you could click on done and then there's your picture right there. Now we can go back and you can see previous ones that we did here. I did a lighthouse and a snowman and then if you want to create a new one all you need to do is press plus again. Okay let's try something to describe an image. Let's do um, let's see boat in a creek. There we go. Click on done and there's your image now to you can actually delete it or you can share it with others or in messages notes or airdrop it to your phone and then when you click on back you can see all your images are here so that's image playground and a quick demo okay the next big feature is chat gpt support chat gpt from OpenAI can be accessed right from Surrey or Writing Tools. You can also use it to compose in Writing Tool and allow you to create something from scratch with ChatGPT. Surrey can also tap into ChatGPT when relevant or to provide you with an answer. A ChatGPT account is not required and your request will be anonymous and won't be used to train OpenAI's models. You can sign in with ChatGPT to access your account benefits if you have an account with paid access and requests will be covered by OpenAI's data policy. So let's take a closer look at that. To get into the ChatGPT settings, all you need to do is go to the Apple Intelligence in Surrey like we were before for the Image Playground. And down here at the bottom, you see the extensions ChatGPT. And you can see Surrey and other features can use ChatGPT to answer your requests. So we can click on this here to see the more information about it. And then in here, we can see the ChatGPT and then the Surrey. We can turn on and off the ability for Surrey to use the chat GPT prompts when the requests are made. We can also set up the chat GPT right here by clicking setup and we can see our new splash screen. When your Mac works with chat GPT, it can do more for you. Enter into Surrey, compose text with writing tools and works with the account like we talked about in the first part with the patch notes. Let's click on next. And now let's talk about the privacy. Your Mac works with chat GPT in a way that preserves your privacy. You're in control. You decide what gets shared and you can turn chat GPT GPT off at any time in the settings like we talked about right here. You can also use it with an account. We talked about that too. So let's click on enable chat GPT. And there we go. So now you can see the menu changed and we now have a sign in account. But again, you don't have to sign in here to step back a little bit. You also have a daily limit. You'll have access to chat GPT's advanced capabilities until you reach your daily limit. Additional requests will use the basic version for up to 24 hours. So now this is where you can go. Let's say you've made like five. It's, it's going to be fine. But if you make 20 or so requests, you're going to show the change in the daily limit and you might have to wait until tomorrow. Now you can also see that this new option here, confirm chat GPT requests. If chat GPT can help with a request, Surrey will ask you before sending any information. Surrey will always ask permission before sending a file request. Now, if you think that that's a Annoying, you can toggle this off and it will automatically move to there. But if you want to know when your requests are going over chat GPT, you can keep this on this toggle here. All right, so let's test it out. All you need to do is click on the Surrey icon up here, or use your double click shortcut. You can type it in here or you can use the microphone. Let's try it out. Who is the founder of chat GPT? 
and you can see that it used a website here when it found its information. Let's try again. Let's try something that has to calculate something. If I took a train from Chicago to Los Angeles, how long would it take? So it uses the website again to get that information. Okay, now that we've got two that it searched the web for, let's try to give it a little bit more of a creative prompt to be able to get just from its own database. So let's see if we can get it to tell us a joke. Tell me a joke. And then it can give you another one. Let's try it a little more. All right, let's try to get it to prompt something that it has to do on its own without looking at websites. Let's ask it something about itself. What are your two favorite movies? There's the prompt that we wanted to see instead of trying to go out to the web. Name your top three favorite movies. And there, that's how you can see that we actually did a Chad GPT question to the database instead of just using Surrey to search the internet. And let's try one more. Can you write a poem about love and heartache? Okay, so we had two prompts with just searching the internet with Surrey, and then two prompts where we actually had to integrate with ChatGPT. So that's working very well. Let's take a look at the other features. Okay, now we're going to test out the new ChatGPT writing tools to be able to compose different features to be able to compose inside the Notes app. So we got this quick story here that I can use, and we can actually do a summary of the story in a one or two sentences. And then if we want to be able to add to it, we can use ChatGPT. Let's do add an ending to this story. Students get into trouble in a new paragraph. Click on use chat GPT. And there we go. And it's able to compose an entire ending to the story. And we can highlight that just like it had there. And we can even do a quick summary of it if you don't want to read the whole thing. Students were summoned to the dean's office after their cheating was discovered. And they were given the option to retake the exam under supervision or face disciplinary action. So those are the new composing tools for ChatGPT. And if you have the changes here, additional Apple intelligence features. Describe your change in writing tools. Allows you to suggest how you'd like something rewritten. For example, a poem. And we actually did that with the Surrey feature earlier. And then photos. The favorites album appears in the utilities collection in addition to pin collections. And recently viewed and recently shared album history can be clear. Now let's take a look at the security content of the 15.2 update. There's 37 different security vulnerabilities that have been patched in the 15.2. Update. The good news is, is that there is no zero days or any issues that have been actively exploited by offenders here. There is one Safari fix and there is four WebKit fixes and those are included in the Safari update for Sonoma and Ventura also. Let's take a look at what's new for enterprise, for governments, schools, and businesses. There's seven different fixes for 15.2. The main focus is, is the mobile device management options to be able to manage Apple intelligence integrations, including chat GPT and the generation of image playgrounds and other applications. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench 6 benchmark scores for our Mac Mini and our M1 MacBook Air. So for the Intel side on our Mac Mini, I like testing some of the oldest versions available. So 2018 is almost the oldest except for the iMac Pro and the M1 MacBook Air is the oldest. So I like to see the bare minimum of Apple's requirements for each platform to get an idea here. So for the Intel Mac Mini, we had a single core of 1483 and a 6630 on the multi-core for 15.1.1 and then once we updated to 15 we got a 1572 and a 6728 so there's a little bit of an improvement there which is really nice now on our m1 macbook air we've got a 2394 and a 8606 on 15.1.1 and we did see a little bit of an improvement on the multi-core on the single core we had a 2380 and an 8768 now let's take a look at open core legacy patch for unsupported macs from 2008 to 2017 we've got a brand new update available 
2.2.0 that was released right before the 15.2 update that includes fixes for 15.2 and a bunch of other fixes. I can't wait to go over all these fixes for you in my next 2.2.0 video that I'm working on. There's a lot of testing that needs to be done on 14 different Mac models, but until then, we've got three models that we can take a quick look at. First up, we got a 2014 MacBook Air running Intel Haswell on 2.2.0 running very well. We've also got our Mac Pro trash can 2013 running our AMD GCN running really well, no issues. And finally, we've got our third test device, which is a MacBook Pro 17 inch 2011 non-metal device. No issues whatsoever that I can see so far, but testing has begun. There's a lot of different models to test against. So I got to get some testing going on these devices, but you can bet that I will have that in the next video for our 2.2.0. And that's 15.2 update. Let me know in the comments what you think about this update. Are you upset that you can't install the Apple Intelligence features on your Intel Mac? Or are you waiting to install because everything's running well okay right now? Are you still staying on Sonoma? Let me know and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.